Hello everyone! Today I'm going to teach you how to turn these grocery store roses into a beautiful dozen rose vase arrangement. Today we will be getting our roses from Whole Foods, and no, they are not sponsoring this video. If you go from now till Valentine's Day, they have two dozen roses on sale for only $24.99. But today I'm going to show you how to make a dozen roses in a vase. So it's Valentine's Day season right now. Traditionally, red roses are the go-to, but feel free to grab any color you want. I also filmed this video on February 6th, but I highly recommend that you go get your roses now because they will sell out fast. When you're picking your roses, you want to make sure you're grabbing tight, long stem, not blown open roses because those roses are going to last longer. You're also going to want to grab a couple of bunches of greenery because a lot of the times when you get roses, they don't come with any sort of greens and you're going to need lots of greens to add to your vase to give your roses some stability. I like to grab two to three different types of greenery because I like to create lots of texture and interest in my arrangements. I really like using eucalyptus because it has that really nice smell to it. Now this part is optional, but you want to make sure you grab one bunch of baby's breath to add to your dozen roses. When you're done shopping, this is what you should have. Now it's time to unpack all the flowers you just bought. You want to start by cutting off any rubber bands that are holding the flowers together and removing all of the plastic. Now you just want to go through each of the flower bunches that you bought and remove all of the rubber bands and all the plastic. This is just going to make your grab and go process when you're arranging a lot easier. Now for the roses, you want to clean these up and process these just a little bit different. Just like the other flowers, you're going to remove the rubber bands and the plastic. And this time, you're also going to cut off all of the thorns and leaves that are on the flowers. Now, you can use a pair of clippers or a pair of scissors, but the goal is to make sure that there aren't any leaves or any thorns on the rose. The leaves will drink up all of the water that the rose tries to receive, so it's important that you remove those leaves because you want to make sure that your flower, the rose, is getting all the water, not the greens. So make sure you snip all of those off. Step two, you also want to take off all of the guard petals. So any brown or rotting petals, you just want to remove them from the base like so. So just go around all of your roses and pull off like the first two to three like rose petals that you see that look really gross. You really want to make sure that the only thing beautiful is just like a beautiful rose left. You don't want to have any of those brown leaves. This process can be a bit tedious and time consuming, but I promise guys, it's worth it. Next, you're going to grab a tall vase. This one is about 9 inches tall. I would say anywhere from like 9 to 11 inches is probably a good size. Also make sure that the vase has a 3 to 4 inch opening. Fill your vase to the top leaving two to three inches of space, making sure that your water won't fall out of your vase. Next, we are going to add greens to our vase. The greens will create stability and help keep our flowers from moving around in the vase. A good rule of thumb is that you don't want your greens to come higher than your hand or one to two times the height of the vase. Anything higher than that will look really odd and unproportional. Before you add any flowers into the vase or greens, you always want to give them a fresh chop. Even if you just chop off a little bit, it's important that you give them a fresh chop so that way they can get good drinking water. Always insert your flowers and your greens on a diagonal angle. This will allow your arrangement to fan out of the vase rather than sit vertically up and down in the vase. I think that's where a lot of people mess up. It's really all about the angles, guys. Rotate your vase as you add greens to your arrangement. You don't want there to be any gaps. If you notice any brown or rotting leaves, just snip those off with your clippers or scissors. Now we are going to add some Israeli ruskus to our arrangement. 
Now this particular green has a lot of leaves on the bottom of the stem, so we're just going to remove those. You don't want any leaves in the water. Leaves create mold and bacteria, and that's just going to kill your arrangement prematurely. So make sure you really take the time to remove all those bottom leaves. Whenever I'm inserting my greens, I always like to focus on adding greens to the perimeter of the vase first, and then I work my way towards the center. Don't forget to rotate your vase as you add greens to it. You really don't want to hyperfixate on one side. Remember, all sides of this arrangement must be beautiful. I did get some silver dollar eucalyptus, but unfortunately it didn't come with too many stems, so I kind of just used this in my arrangement as an accent for the smell. Adding a healthy amount of greens is key to making any dozen roses look beautiful because all a dozen roses is essentially is greens, roses, and baby's breath. Now it's time for the fun part, adding the roses. When we add the roses, we are going to be working in three layers. I like to use the seven, four, and one method, meaning that we add seven roses to the first layer, four roses to the second, and one rose at the top. When you cut your rose, you want the height of your first layer to hit about two to three inches above the lip of the vase. That's about how long your rose should be. Use your clippers or scissors to cut your rose to the height you want it to be. And whenever you insert any flowers, make sure you're inserting on a diagonal angle at the lip of the vase. When you make a dozen roses, think of soft serve ice cream. You want your first layer to come out wide, your second layer to come out a bit more narrow, and then that final top rose to be straight up and down on a vertical angle. Now taking your next rose, because you already entered at that first rose, you now just can measure the height and just cut your rose to be the same height as your first rose. And don't forget to insert on that diagonal angle. You really want to make sure you get that wide angle for that first layer. Rotate your vase as you go because you want to be equally spacing and placing your roses throughout your arrangement. Take it one rose at a time and just have fun with it. You know, this is supposed to be like a nice, fun, relaxing activity. It doesn't have to be stressful. If you're having trouble inserting your rose into your vase, try spinning the rose into the place, kind of like in a drill motion. This will help insert your rose into your vase and just make the overall process much smoother. Now if you find that your roses keep moving out of place, just add more greens. You probably just need more stability in your arrangement. Now with your last five roses, you're going to want to pick out the best, most beautiful rose because that's going to be the top center rose in our arrangement. So let's just set him aside. Now your next layer of roses, you want to come up two inches higher from your first layer. When inserting on this next layer, it's okay to insert on a more vertical angle because now we are coming in towards the top of our arrangement. Remember to rotate your vase because you want to equally space and place your four roses for your second layer throughout your arrangement equally. For our last rose, we just want to add him directly in the center, straight up and down into our arrangement. So just make sure to insert him as close to the center as possible. So this is what you should have so far. Now you can actually just leave it like this and just do like roses and greens, there's nothing wrong with that. I actually prefer the look of this better but I'm going to show you what it's going to look like with baby's breath. 
Now, I'm just not really a fan of baby's breath personally. I just think it kind of smells bad, but traditionally a dozen roses does have baby's breath. So you just want to add little pieces of baby's breath to, throughout your arrangement. And that's just going to add a nice filler and give it that signature dozen rose look. Now, when you're cutting pieces of baby's breath, make sure that the pieces are actually long enough to hit the bottom of the floor. Like you want your stems to be able to drink the water as your flowers drink the water. And as like the water level drops, you want to make sure that the baby's breath stems are hitting the bottom of the floor so that way it's able to get water just as much as the roses. Now I'm just placing my baby's breath in any of the holes and spaces that I see in between my roses and my greens. If I see a hole, that's where I'm going to add baby's breath. This is also a perfect time to go through your arrangement and add in any greens where you see holes. I also like to go around and add greens to where I see the stems. So like right here, how you see the stems, I'm just going to want to hide that with a piece of greenery because I feel like that just looks so much better. And here you have it guys. This is what your dozen roses should look like when you're done. Now, if you end up recreating this look, make sure to tag me on Instagram at Flowers by Alexis. I would love to see your creations. If you like this video, make sure to give it a like, comment, and subscribe. I post videos and flower tutorials all the time here on my YouTube channel. Follow me on Instagram at Flowers by Alexis, and I will see you all soon with another video. Bye!